Good afternoon, Knots fans. Welcome to Meadow Lane. We're here in the boardroom and it's a perfect place to be here with Jim O'Brien, who's looking about as menacing as he usually does in his midfield berth for Knots County. Jim, how are you today? Good, very good. Aye. Just finished training, so feeling good. Looking forward to answering some fascinating, interesting, intriguing questions from the Knots fans. Yeah, as long as I'm not about the celebration, I don't mind. Let's be original. I made a backside yet, so let's just move on. I'm not going to let him move on, Knots fans. How is the knee? Sound, aye. I just... You've got to commit to it, and uh, after I hit the brakes on the surface, I just went with it, and I had a good laugh with uh, Steady after it, so, ah, uh, it's fine, everything's good. It's, uh, everything's fine, that's fun, don't worry, he's, he's, back, he's been training fully, played the rest of the game, it's all good, and it made for great content for our video channel, so thank you, Jim, no a personal thank you from me. Um, thank you also to everybody who sent in questions, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, plenty of stuff coming through for Jim, send yours through as well, but we'll start with the pre-prepared ones. Um, Jim, this is from John on Twitter. Milk first in tea or not? Not. Thank you. And coffee, though. And coffee. All oh, right. So put my coffee in, put my sugar in, put my milk in, because it stops the coffee from burning. There you go. There you go. Bit of science as well. Uh, GForce on Instagram asks, who was your favourite player when you were growing up? Uh, Henrik Larsson. Loved Henrik Larsson. Um, he was his movement was a disgrace. So good. Um, and he's finishing. He scored a lot of goals for Celtic. And uh, yeah, I think he was my hero. Celtic, your team then? Celtic's my team, yeah. Celtic's my team. A couple of questions on the beard, which you were probably expecting, because it is stunning, I have to say. Yeah. Hayden on Twitter, do you use beard oil? Uh, now and again. Not not consciously. Sits in my, sits in my bathroom at home. And uh, every now and then, but... Not every day. Would you describe yourself as a modern man or not? Yeah. Because like, obviously your approach on the pitch is quite a rugged, rough and ready style. Yeah, it's weird because <clears throat> I feel like as I've got older, I've become a different player. Um, like I've, I've never known as being like a hard player. And then when I went to Bradford, I think because I put myself out a wee bit at the time, everyone thought I was this mad hard man. Because I used to be a winger. Yeah. I was all, I was always a winger. I was always a wide player. Um, what brought that out of you then? What What was know. it? I don't know. I think it's it was maybe being out of contract in the summer, and you've got to you've got to do something different. And I think when I went out to Bradford, that's what they needed at the time. Something to put themselves about and put your put yourself put your body on the line, really. Um, and I've just sort of carried that on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a role I'm enjoying. Uh, I like playing in the middle of the park now. Um, our winger days are, are long gone. Well, we'll see. You never know. The versatility is a valuable trait in football. Another question on the beard. This is from 19-year-old Len on Twitter. I mean, 19-year-old Len, that's an interesting name for a 19-year-old. Yeah, I like that, though. Um, as a 19-year-old who can't grow a beard, can you give me some tips? Eh, uh, no. I don't have anything for you, bud. Just Perseverance? Yeah, stick with it, stick with it, but if it starts getting a bit Look wispy it. and just get it off. It might just not be for you, Len, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, we can't all be like Jim. Next question, Mark on Facebook, what was it like scoring your first goal for us? We've already talked about the celebration, so we don't need to talk about that, but let's talk about the goal, which I know you're particularly proud of for a couple of reasons. Yeah, um, I think the celebration sort of took away from the goal, because yeah. it was actually a decent finish and it's... Doesn't happen very often. It was my first goal for two years, and incidentally, that's when I started playing centre mid two years ago. So once I've dropped in the pitch and dropped a little bit deeper, the chances to score don't uh, come along as often. But it's always nice to get a goal, and it was an important goal at an important time in the game for us. So um, it's you a good feeling. You said after the game that you couldn't remember it. it. It seemed like one of those instinctive sort of finishes where the ball dropped and it was in the net almost before anybody knew what happened. Yeah, because. It, when I'd hit it, it went through a few bodies. I think Steady's like, Steady's like had to Just matrix it out of the way, and 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 you don't even see it hit the net. As soon as you see the ball going past the goalkeeper, and you hear the fans cheering. You've already peeled away, so um, I don't remember much about it. I just remember trying to run away from Doyler. That was it. That was it. Sounds like a few people trying to run away from Michael Doyle at the minute. Uh, Cameron on Instagram. Any tips for a nine-year-old midfielder? Uh Work hard, listen to your coaches, and put your all into every 
every training session and every game and and yeah, just just give it a hundred percent. What's the most important? Can you remember training at that sort of age? What's the most important? Is it the mental aspects or the technical aspects of the game at that age? No, I think when you're nine years old, enjoyment's the most important thing. Um, I think a lot of emphasis is put on coaches now to make sure that at that age that um, kids are enjoying football and they want to come back. So he needs to be enjoying it first and foremost. Um, I think that's the main thing. Sound advice. Um, Jack on Twitter asks, who do you support? Celtic, as we found out earlier. Ben also on Twitter. Who's the funniest player at the club? Apart from yourself, obviously, um, Jim. Toots is funny. He's a funny boy. Every day he's, uh, he's always up to something. Um, I think him and Elliot live together, so they come as a they come as a sort of package deal. Um, but if Elliot's a sort of... He'll load the gun for Toots. He'll say, do this or do that, and... Which is a way in doing it. He's, yeah, he's, he's a good lad to have around. Sounds like Jim's getting an idea of the dynamics of the dressing room here. Uh, John on Twitter, what message could you send to the fans? What more can they do to support you guys in, in your efforts to keep us in the league? The, the support on Saturday at Forest Green was sensational. There was a huge home crowd against Lincoln. There's going to be another huge home crowd against Mansfield. What have you made of the sort of the backing from the stands so far? It's been class. Well, when I first came in, my debut was, was 15,000 here because of the, the oh, deal it was on. So... There's not much more that the fans can do. Um, club's going through a tough time. Um, it's been a long season for them. I think they've been excellent, well, especially since I've come in. I've, I've had no, I've had no problems at all with them. So um, just keep doing what you're doing. I think. I think that's the main message. I mentioned Michael Doyle earlier. There's a question about him here from Joe on Twitter. What's it like? I'll, I'll read this word for word because I think right. it's be- I think it's beautifully presented by Joe. What's it like playing alongside God in human form? A.K.A. Sir Michael Doyle. It's good, aye. Um, it's a hard question to answer. Um, it's, well, e- it's easy because he knows his job. And how do you how do you complement each other? Do you think because there's been a, a noticeable upturn in the way we've been controlling games and having more chances in games since you two have been in the middle? Well, I'm yet to tell him that he's the second best player in that dressing room, the captain Coventry City. So I've yet to tell him that. I didn't know John's their captain Coventry City. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, he's good. Michael knows he's he knows the game. He reads it well, and I think we've just sort of clicked um, pretty quickly. There's no real time. You can you can't be wasting time. You've got to hit the ground running. You come in, and and he's done that. Um, as if the other lads who've come in with a good transfer window, so it's clicked pr- pretty well, pretty quickly. And um, yeah, he's a, he's a good pro. He knows the game. He, n- he knows when to slow the game down, quicken it up. He's vocal in the dressing room which I like, I always react well to people like that because it's similar to myself, so um, yeah, it's good having them, it's good having them. This one's from Steve on Twitter and I will reveal at this stage that Steve actually is our multimedia editor uh, at Notts County, he's on annual leave at the minute and he's he's taking the time out to ask you a, a very insightful question. Why is he off? He's off because it was his birthday at the weekend, he wasn't at Forest Green either. So, so, he's, so he's off and he's... He's off and he still wants to know. Get him in. That's how that's how popular Jim is. Even the people within the club want to know more about him. The question is, what's your favourite guitar chord? <laughs> I don't know. What, what kind of question is that? It's a, it's a musical question. Um, G. G. There you are, Steve. I hope that's answered your question. On to a question from Max on Twitter. Guessing you'll say no, and I really I really like this question. Mm. Don't read don't read them in advance. You're that, supposed to. Guessing you'll say no, but have you ever been intimidated by a teammate or opposition player? Um, I was a guy at Celtic when I was coming through, Bobo Baldi. Oh, he yeah. was massive. He used to wear, he wore studs every day. But he had, you know the studs at the, the back of your boots, the big ones? He used to wear them in every stud. So they were all massive. He used to stand on you in training. Big, nicest guy in the world, but as soon as the, as soon as the, Always ready to be kicked. Um, that was it. He was he was in beast mode. Um, game against Cambridge here. I caught the boy. Is it a beery yeah. striker? I caught him and I didn't. Uh, to be fair, I didn't realise I caught him uh, with my elbow, and he was bleeding and stuff. And I, I, I'm I'm mates with Gary Deegan, and he says, "Oh no, <laughs> you've woke the bear. You've woke the bear up." Uh, um, so he went for me in the tunnel after the oh, game. Really? Yeah, that was. I was chasing the lads. <laughs> lads! <laughs> lads! You got away? Yeah, I got away. He gave us a grab, but um, that was quite intimidating. Especially your f- first... Um, was, that my, was that my debut? It will have been, yeah. My debut. And you're 
you know what I mean? You're, you know, starting fights and stuff. We don't he, have to play him again this year. No, he was quite intimidating. He was quite intimidating, he's big, big guy. guy. Yeah. Um, Sam on Instagram, um, what was your drive to come to a struggle in Notts County? Uh, I think I see him when I first came in. Uh, it was the manager uh, who put so much effort into to bringing me here. He was on the phone to my agent constantly and every couple of days seeing just seeing what my situation was. Um, and I never, the bottom of the league thing never really bothered me. Um, the manager, once I spoke to him and stuff and he said what his, what his visions were and stuff like that and I knew there was good players here. It's just a case of trying to turn the mentality around a wee bit. Um, lads are low, in co are low in confidence and you can see the difference a couple of weeks make. So I think uh, at that point of view, the bottom of the league thing never never really bothered me. It was a it was just a challenge. Okay, thanks to everybody who's sending the, the messages through on Facebook. Um, Simon asks, do you think we've got a good chance of beating Mansfield? Yeah, I think we've got a good chance of beating anyone really. When you, when you see the last two games, it's top of the league opposition. We've played really well. Um, I think we're unlucky against Lincoln if we get in at half time um, if I don't let my man skip past me then we don't score and you know it's set up but then again we get lucky as well when they miss a penalty so I think we can we can beat anyone um, things are starting to turn a little bit we're starting to get more belief and more confidence and we're creating more chances and I think yeah we can beat anyone it's a derby as well so it's um, there's a lot on the line by our um, by our estimations, it's actually the biggest Nottinghamshire derby in history, given the position we find ourselves in, and given everything that's at stake for Mansfield in their bid for promotion. Um, we're looking at I think we're looking at potentially getting up to about twelve, thirteen thousand in the ground Saturday, based on sales since the win at Forest Green. These are the these are the sort of occasions that you know you got to love to play in, aren't they? Yeah, it's not even that. Like we realise how big it is for the supporters as well. Uh, people going to work and they're uh, working with opposition fans and um, it's bragging rights over the weekend you can make or break people's weekend so um, we know the importance of that as well but you've got to take the occasion out of it and realise it's, it's another three points up for grabs and you know, we'll be trying to get the three points on Saturday Steve Grocock asks how are you finding Nottingham now obviously I know you live in Barnsley but have you had a chance to have a look around the city or anything yet? No I've only I know how to get to Baseford and I know how to get from Baseford to here um, and back to the motorway. So I've not seen much um, of the city yet. Um, a good friend of mine plays with Forrest, so I'll need to Who's that? look still. Oh, right. So I'll need to get some time with him and yeah, spend some time with him because he lives here. So uh, Eventually I will, I will. It's, um, it's all that. difficult when you're at a car school as well. Who yeah, do you do school with? Uh, we steady and uh, Briz. So it's difficult when you're in a car school to, uh, to, to, fly to spend the some nest. time. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Well. And just do it on other people's time, you know? Yeah, you'll have to have a look. Some, summer in Nottingham is brilliant. Do you, 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 Scott, you, should, you probably don't like cricket, do you? <sighs> no. Silly question. Don't ask anything about cricket, guys. Um, Jürgen Halligan, it's a good question. What's the best derby game you've played in? Because you've played for some big clubs in the past with some pretty vociferous fan bases I'd imagine you've you've experienced some good ones yeah the, um, Barnsley Sheffield Wednesday that was always a good one um, Barnsley Leeds was always a good one we always seem to do well against Leeds as well um, they were big games big fan bases and uh, they were always good good games to play in Andrew Cleary with an interesting one as well why why do you think the SPL's in such a poor state it's not it's coming back. It's, just, um, it's getting a lot better since Rangers have come back. Since um, Brendan Rodgers has gone in, um, Stephen Gerrard's gone in, Steve Clark, you've got Derek McInnes at Aberdeen, you had Neil Lennon at Hibs, all good managers. Um, it's a very competitive league, and it gets a little uh, gets a little bit of stick, but people don't realise um, that they, it's a good standard. There's there's good players up there and. You see teams like Kilmarnock and Aberdeen competing at the top and um, vying for second second place and European places and stuff like that as well. So um, I don't agree with that comment. Okay, fair enough. Do you do you see yourself potentially playing in the SPL again in your career? No. You happy in England? Is that? Yeah. You my son's here, so um, I've loved England since I came down. I went I went back. I went to Ross County. Um, 
because it was a good deal. I knew the manager, I knew a lot of the lads who were there already. Um, I went short term at first on loan and then um, signed again. Loved my time there, it was a great place to go and work. It's a bit far, like, but yeah, it was a good place, a good club. Um, but no, I was always had my eye on getting back down, down the road and this is my home now, so uh, I like it down here. It is your home and you have got a child to pick up from school very soon. So we'll make this the, the last question. It seems like a good place to leave it going into a, a big derby as well. It's from uh, Ben Carnhill. Thanks for your question, Ben. Uh, is there more belief in the dressing room that we can stay up after last weekend's win? Is the Mansfield game being treated any differently, knowing it'll be a tough game and a big atmosphere? It's not getting treated any differently. We, we know what's at stake. We know it's, a, we know it's a derby for the supporters. The atmosphere will be great. But we're not treating it any different. It's another game. It's, another, it's just opposition in front of us, and um, it's one we'll be looking to win. But no, no, I don't think uh, I don't think anything changes. But the confidence is definitely from when I first came in till now. It's night and day. You can f you can feel it. You feel it yourself. Even when you're in, even when you're at home and you get a good result, and you think, oh, that's positive. It makes you feel better. It doesn't make you feel as sore um, on the Sunday and. You start believing. You look forward to coming into training, and there's a there's a good atmosphere in the changing room. So um, definitely things are starting to turn a little bit. But it's going to be less. It's going to be there's going to be plenty of ups and downs towards the end of the season. Um, we just need to try and get a little run going and, and keep that going as as long as we can and um, see where it takes us. But one game at a time, and the next one's Mansfield. Mansfield. It is. Next one is Mansfield, and it's going to be uh, a tremendous occasion. Thank you very much, Jim, for sparing the time after your gym session today. Double session for Jim, and he still spared the time. Very, very kind of him. And thank you to everyone who's sent in a question as well.